Aloha, and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My name is Bear Wozniak. I have one of the best gigs you could possibly have in the world. I get to talk with people that normally wouldn't even give me the time of day. But because I have a radio show on EWTN, they, they, uh, they let me uh, have an opportunity to visit with them. And I have a guest today. This is our third time we've gotten to talk together. And really, it's just an excuse to talk about surfing because I have as my guest uh, Father Don Calloway, uh, the surfing priest. Aloha, Father Don. Aloha, my brother. Good to be with you. <laughs> Good to be with you, too. Hey, when is the last time you've, you've got to surf? Uh, probably about two weeks ago. Um, I was out in California, and uh, there's some really good swell coming through. It was, uh, it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. Where did you surf? Uh, Black. It's in La Jolla. That's, that's your spot. That's my go-to spot when I'm on the West Coast. Yeah, yeah that's such a unique spot. It's, very, it's a little bit intimidating if you haven't surfed it before. Seems to me. Yeah, it's 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 pretty hardcore. Yeah, you get that offshore canyon that when the swell comes in, it just magnifies it. Whatever you know, they say if it says two to three foot, usually that means four to five, and then if it's four to five, it's usually six to seven. So uh, it's good stuff. But isn't there some like isn't there like some thick seaweed or and some seal seals living in that area too? I'm just trying to remember. It's got kind of that yeah, feel to it too. It's wild. To the south of there, yeah. There's La Jolla Cove. It's got a seal colony. Um, so there's definitely a lot of, a lot of stuff going on in the water for sure. Yeah. It's a kind of a wild place. So, um, you know, the first time we, the first time we talked, I got to get a little bit of background story about the mischievous young Don Calloway in, uh, uh, in, um, in Japan. Do you want to own up to what, what went down and share with us your conversion story? Uh, kind of like the, you know, um, not, I don't want you to abbreviate it too much, abbreviate it too much, but can you give us, mm -hmm. tell us the truth about it? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I wasn't raised in any faith at all. You know, I wasn't baptized when I was born, and I grew up in a very tumultuous home, actually three homes, because my mother was remarried uh, three times, and um, I didn't grow up with anything, and so I turned to the things of the world and ended up, uh, my third father, we lived in California, then we moved to Japan, and because he was in the military, I got kicked out of the country of Japan when I was 15 years old for criminal activity. And then I went to two rehabs. I was thrown in jail when I was 18. I had long hair down on my waist, followed an old hippie band called The Grateful Dead, and just was living a very crazy life with all the drugs and all the immorality. And then I had a huge conversion when I was going on 21 um, that just floored me. Got the divine two by four and <laughs> uh, fell in love with, with uh, the Virgin Mary, with Jesus, with the Catholic Church, and then discerned my vocation to become a priest. And now I've been a priest almost 15 years. So it's, it's, it's amazing. Well, what tell me, though, about that, that conversion experience, that kind of St. Augustine, it sounds like, uh, path that you were following. Can you share with us that, that, that nitty-gritty part when the 2x4 when the, when the, uh, the <laughs> came flying? Yeah. I, um, I was at my parents' house one night, and I was hardly ever there. I was passing through town, and um, I was just at rock bottom. I, I mean, I just was giving up on life, and had crazy thoughts going through my head and I um they had a book they had a whole bunch of Catholic books that they had bought because they had to convert to Catholicism like almost three years before I did um and they had books on their bookshelf about the Catholic Church well one of them was about the Virgin Mary and I, I wasn't even sure who that was I was so ignorant um of religion especially Christianity and so I picked it up and I started flipping through it and it just blew me away i was like what in the world is this i was like i've never heard of this and, and i just couldn't put the book down i kept reading it and the next day i went and talked to a catholic priest the very next day and i mean it was unbelievable i mean i looked a sight i smelled a sight you, you probably could have got a contact high if you're close enough to me i mean <laughs> i was i was bad news you know and but i my life just the conversion just snowballed from there i mean i i started going to church every day um, and then I ended up within nine months, I became a Catholic myself and, um, just, it went from there. I mean, it was, oh my goodness. Looking back on those days now, it was like spiritual romance with God. It was like a honeymoon with God. It was just awesome. You know what, Father Don, uh, and we're speaking with Father Don Calloway, my friend, the surfing priest, um, you're, you're in Steubenville right now, correct? I think. Yeah, and but but that's right. Gets his opportunities to surf down in Southern California, normally Black Beach. But 
The thing about what you've said, I think should give people uh, who are listening who are maybe in that similar place or people that have, have people that they love or children or brothers or sisters. The thing about you is whatever you did, you did aggro, you know, whether it was felonious yeah. things or, or you were surfing, I think at that time too, weren't you? Whatever, it's kind of like whatever you did, you, you went uh, full, you went full bore. And so when you yeah. found a, a, a place where you could put that, 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 uh, that, uh, that, that intensity or that focus, uh, then you went deeper with God than most people would, you know, I, right off the bat, you went deep. So don't lose heart. If you have a, a father Don Calloway in your life, uh, who's right now hasn't found the Lord because when they do find the, find the Lord, you get out of their way. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's funny you say that because yeah, I'm intense by nature, but you know, um, grace builds on nature. And so, you know, it's true what you said. Like if, if, people out there are praying for their son who's rebellious or their daughter who's, you know, way out there. Well, you know, take heart in, in the sense of keep praying for their conversion because, you know, if they give their lives to the Lord, they're going to be zealous. They're going to be on fire, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and you talked about your, the, uh, you read the book about Mary. Uh, and uh, so, but what was that, what was that two by four moment when, you know, you, be, you, be, you know, what brought you to that point uh were you at a point of depression or you just, just kind of were shocked to find this book and uh, what, you know, what, how, how did that moment uh, come to pass that, that suddenly you were ready, open and, and, and ready to hear? Yeah. Well, I mean, at that point in my life, I had dropped out of high school. I'd been in two rehabs. I got thrown in jail. Actually, I got thrown, thrown in jail multiple times, but um, I was just at my, you know, wit's end. I mean, I, I didn't know what life was about. I didn't want to be here. And, a lot of my friends had actually taken their own life at that point, and um, I didn't know what anything was about. So I'm passing through my town and my parents' house. I'm staying there, and I just I didn't know what to do. And um, that's when, mm. you know, I went out in the hallway to look at books, and I didn't have any intention of looking at religious stuff. I wanted to look at, like, a National Geographic and whatever. And, and then there was this one book on there that I took out of the Virgin Mary. I was like, what's this? And it just blew me away because I'm, I'm a guy, you know, I'm a, I'm a dude, man. So like I, most of the ways that I sinned in my past were, you know, guy sins, you know, I'm, mm. you know, I'm drawn to the feminine. It's awesome. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's lovely. And sadly I took advantage of that and abused that back in the day. And so God knew what to do to get me. So he had me read a book about the most beautiful woman that there's ever been mm. a woman who heals wounded manhood whose beauty is like bait to the soul and it brings you to the truth of Jesus Christ. And so that's what God did to me. It was, he, he had me read this book about his mother, the Virgin Mary, and that drew me in. I mean, that was like, that got me. So let's and talk, let's talk about there, that. Let's talk about that for one moment, Father Don. Um, books, yeah. it's Christmas. One of the best mm -hmm. evangelistic things people can do at Christmas is send a book to someone who, mm -hmm. who got it, you know, that person you've been praying for. Father Don Calloway has this beautiful book. Um, his newest book is, um, got to put my glasses on, Champions of the Rosary. If you could see it right now, you'd see how dog-eared dog it is, Father. I've read it a couple of times. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you can use that. I, of course, I have a couple of books, too, at my website. But, but this is the moment to, to, uh, to send that, go on Amazon or wherever you need to go, and send some books out to your your friends as Christmas presents. It's a very passive way, in a sense, to do it. But who knows? Maybe they or someone else will just pick up that book. It happened to Augustine, right? Take and read. That's right. And he was reading from, uh, mm -hmm. I forget which of the Gospels, and it was like, if not now, mm -hmm. when? And he had that conversion experience. So uh, this, this uh, radio show is going out just before Christmas. Please plant some seeds. Send some great books out to to your friends who maybe they already know the Lord and that would be good for them to do that. But otherwise use this as your great advantage to, uh, to plant seeds. So, um, and, and you know, father Don, I heard a vicious rumor. You and I are going to, ho to, uh, the Holy lands together. Yeah. Not just a rumor. <laughs> it's true. Man. Just, in a couple of weeks we'll be over in Israel together. I know yeah. I'm leaving in 13 days. We're going to go to Tel Aviv. Do you know, they used to have a picture of me in Tel Aviv surfing in a surf shop there. 
tandem surfing. Oh, wow. I think it was 20 years That's ago. Doc, yeah, Doc Paskowitz told me he saw my picture there. So I'm going to go see if I can still find it, see if it's still there. Uh, this is Bear Wozniak uh, with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we want to invite you guys to go to our website, bearwozniak.com. Uh, we have so much great stuff there. We just got the discs from, uh, from um, EWTN of our 10-episode reality TV show, Long Ride Home, where we ride motorcycles across the United States in a, in a quest to go deeper with God. And we can't think of a better way for you to plant seeds with those, with that. And we also have a lot of our, our gear and also uh, uh, my books, Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul and Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And Father Don Calloway's book is available, I'm sure, on Amazon, right, Father? Yeah, it is. But yeah. Maybe the easiest way or at your local Catholic bookstore, Champions of the Rosary. When we come back, we're going to be talking a little bit more about uh, my, my favorite weapon, uh, the Rosary. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I have the funnest uh, gig in the world, and uh, our guest is Father Don Calloway. He was mentioning before we took the break how uh, God takes our nature when we abandon ourselves to his will, and he makes us more like ourselves. Uh, his grace uh, uh, resting on, our, on the way he made us, the way we're wired, our spiritual and rational soul's uh, uh, DNA, so to speak, in our, in, our, in our body, the way we are. He makes you more of who you are, not less, when you abandon your life to him. Uh, and I just want to take a moment to invite you guys. We have something I just kind of unexpected that's begun to happen in the ministry. We have something for men only. It's called Bear's Man Cave. Pretty, It's a private Facebook group. And you can only be a part of it by going to my website, bearwasnick.com. And what we do is there's a group of men there, and we will post... Uh, you know, just our thoughts, like maybe a John Wayne thought or a John Paul II thought or, you know, what our, like Dan Barta just, just posted last week that he finished a marathon and Jay Flunker's telling Jen us to dive into a pool every morning before our, our prayer, no matter what the temperature is. And, and, we, and we, we share with each other what's going on in our lives, our children, that you know, we need help uh, with our prayer or maybe there's a physical health issue or whatever, but it's just a place uh, for men to gather and to freely be men, we're, we're, we are believing that man need, men need to reestablish their place, their dignity, their masculine spirituality, and that iron sharpens iron. iron. So the Bears Man Cave is a place that we can do that. And then every two or three weeks, whenever we feel like it, we get a video chat room going. So we have a, you know, lots of men uh, watching and talking to each other on a video chat. And uh, we, we're going through my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and and we also always have a cigar. So if you join the Bears Man Cave, I just got to tell you guys, this has been really uh, super more popular than I thought. It's like the Holy Spirit action plan. We came up with a, a, a cigar sampler with seven cigars, and, and it's called the Seven Virtues. So the four cardinal virtues are milder blends, and then the three theological virtues are Maduros. They're beautiful, beautiful cigars. And uh, so uh, you can get them at our website but, uh, and send them out as gifts. But, but we'll have a cigar, and if you're a member of the cave, you might have a, a Bears Man Cave whiskey tumbler, coffee cup, or beer mug. And we just talk story with each other, and it's just beautiful. Father Don, what do you think about that idea? Isn't that kind of different? <laughs> that's different, bro. That's for sure. I've never heard of anything like that. It sounds pretty cool. <laughs> We're talking with Father Don Calloway, our surfing priest. Uh, and we just had a moment to go over uh, briefly your conversion. But I want to hear. I want to. I want to. Go, I want to do one more thing. I want to ask everybody two things. First of all, what I want. To, I want you to tell everybody what that one wave that you remember, that perfect moment. And tell us mm. about. Do you, do you, I mean, you maybe you have many of them, but there is that one moment when every when time stood still. Can you share with us that? And surfing. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, you're right. I do have quite a few of them, but obviously, I mean, for me, it was a perfect barrel, 
you know, where it's, it's head high overhead and you just make the drop, which is critical. And, you know, you're going down the face and you, you pull back into the, the face and you, you stall it a little bit. And then all of a sudden you're just in this tube that's liquid. And somehow this is the amazing thing about it. You're completely surrounded by water and yet you're not wet and you're just flying down this tunnel that's got this sound that's so unique uh, when it's crashing, you know, on the other side of you and you're riding like this foam ball, you know, you're just like flying. It feels like you're literally on some kind of carpet ride, you know, and, and um, you come, when you come out of it, um, you just feel like you've got shot out of a gun. You're just <laughs> boom, you know, and it's just absolutely, I mean, it, it is, it, it lasts maybe, you know, five to eight seconds when you're in that barrel but that feels like like you said time stops it, it's you're in a time tunnel you know and you know it's you just, never you never ride a barrel if it's it, when you're in a barrel you are going fast that's a fast oh call. yeah <laughs> does it kind of feel like maybe the surge you got when you gave your life to the lord did you kind of have that kind oh, of in many ways yeah tell me about that yeah for sure well yeah i mean it's just you know, because it's it's something that is just so um, awe inspiring that you 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 know that um, you're you're involved in something that is beyond you, yourself, and that's I think why like I'm drawn to you know my faith, and I'm also drawn to the ocean because it's so deep, it's so profound, it's so just infinite. You know, it's it's just so amazing that you never want to leave it, so you never want to leave God, of course, mm-hmm. and like most people, when they go to the beach, they never want to leave it. You know, you, you have to drag people away from the beach because it's just so amazing. And that, that's me. You know, I'll tell you what. I get up in the morning. I usually get up early. It's just a natural instinct of me an hour before. I, you know, I do, a, I, I do a morning sunrise catechism, ocean sunrise catechism every morning from my deck, overlooking hmm. the ocean for 15 minutes on Facebook Live. And, you know, I get up early and I just, I just, I just have to get, I have to drag myself away from my prayer time to go do that morning catechism. You know, it's like being mm. uh, in the, it's, it's like being out surfing that perfect wave, that perfect day. And, and uh, just, mm-hmm. you know, just, Oh, just, you know, and reading beautiful books and spending time with the Lord, mm-hmm. you know, the, as beautiful as that ocean sunrise is. And today it was spectacular. There's nothing more beautiful mm. than truth. The <laughs> truth is right. truth. And I've, I have someone in my life now who's becoming a Catholic. And she was saying how mm. every time she goes to RCIA, it's like, yeah, now now that I understand that, now I get this, and now that I understand this, I I understand that. Mm. So it is like that. It's the ocean, the Catholic teaching and spirituality is, is deeper than any ocean, you know. Mm-hmm. So now we want to ask you another yeah. question. Now I want to ask you another question. Your worst wipeout. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, my worst wipeout was not just one; it was like two. It was a, I got a, you know a two wave hold down where I wiped out on the first wave and it was big and it was ugly and it was mean. And it was, it was a short period swell, which means, you know, the the waves were pretty close together and it had a lot of punch and um, it held me down. And so the second one behind it came in and I was never able to resurface to get more air. And I was just, I was a rag doll. I mean, I was just getting tossed underwater and I was in pure panic mode, you know, um, because I had nothing left. And so I came up and had there been a third one that landed on me, I was a goner, but there wasn't. Um, I was able to get up and get air and, uh, but that was sketchy. I mean, I was like, Oh my, I thought I was going to (laughs) die. And you know, you were probably surfing in cold water and that seems to just take the, that just seems to take an extra squeeze on you somehow that cold water when you take a wipe out in, in a really cold water like california i don't know if it was was it was it in california where the water tends to be colder it, yeah it was and what happened too was when i initially wiped out i hit the 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 water so hard that you know my my air was kind of forced out to begin with and mm. so i wasn't going on much i wasn't able to get like one big gulp of air before it happened it just happened so fast and then I could not find the surface. And then I, another one came. And as you know, the power of that just, it just pushed me deep. And man, I was like scratching for the surface. Oh my. Did goodness. you ever hit bottom? Were you able to find bottom so you could push off? No, I never mm. hit bottom. And my, my leash broke. So, you know, sometimes with the tension of the leash, you wow. can tell which way's up because your right. board's always, you know, 
but I, I had nothing to go on. I was just on spin cycle. You know? <laughs> Did the leash snap right away? Yeah, it snapped right as isn't soon that, as I hit. It isn't was that gone. a horrible feeling? <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, that uh, that moment uh, when the wave seems to take it personal that you're riding it. <laughs> it just, <it's> become <laughs> That's a, right. It just slaps you. <laughs> <laughs> My son, Shane, who's monitoring this, he used to love to go out and just get the best. Uh, he, first thing he would do is paddle out and take the biggest wave on the head until one day he was mm. held down for well over a minute. And uh, mm. uh, it was tingling. You know, the tingling starts in your toes and work its, works its way up to your heart. Yeah. And when it gets there, it's kind of like you go, you pass out. He's about to get there. Yeah. And I think he hit bottom. And so when you hit bottom, wow. you can push off, you know. So he pushed off. and Right. But the closer you get to the surface, it's still you still don't get any relief. It's worse. But there is a right. lesson in yeah. that, that those people out there right now that maybe have hit bottom in their life, at least you know which way is up, you know. That's true. That's true. That's you, right. You know, Father Don, uh, this segment is already almost over, <laughs> just flying by. Mm, wow. And Fa- Father Don Calloway, our beautiful uh, priest, so fortunate uh, for all of our priests, and uh, uh, has written this beautiful book, which I've, I, I have it out on my man cave. My man cave is actually out on my, my ocean balcony here. I've read through it a couple of times, uh, Champions of the Rosary. It's one of the best books uh, written on the history and the different champions of the rosary. We're going to talk about that when we get back. But I do want to remind you guys, um, they're telling me this, the next few shows I have, I've been neglecting telling you, go to our website, bearwoznik.com, and check out all of the gear. We got all of our Long Ride Home. And by the way, Long Ride Home is showing, uh, EWTN is showing again for the third time. It showed on the Armed Forces Network. It's going to be up on Amazon Prime and iTunes, hopefully, oh, hopefully in a couple of months. And we're, pray for us, please, because we're hoping Netflix will pick it up. When we met with Monsignor Gino at the Vatican in September, he said it's one of the most exciting things he's seen as far as reaching outside uh, the church uh, to evangelize and also uh, evangelizing within the church. So go to bearwoznik.com and you can get all kinds of stuff. You can get motorcycle patches, coffee cups, our our books, and and you can get the 10-episode reality TV show to give as a gift, too. Uh, This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with uh, Father Don Calloway, and he and I are heading to Israel in just a few days, so uh, we'll be right back with more. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We know that in this world full of adversity, but we know that with the Lord, we can turn adversity into an adventure. And the greatest adventure, you know, think about the whole universe, the, the black holes and, and the, the different stars that are exploding and quasars and, you know, billions of years of, of, of space all because God wanted to make you. It took three, three generations of stars to create the, the chemicals uh, that are inside your body. And uh, it's, it, the, whole, the whole cosmos is, was made so God could create you. And when you were conceived, whether or not you were a mistake or even in the worst situations, maybe you were conser- conceived in, in the middle of a rape, no matter what, that might have been a mistake, but you're not a mistake because that moment... God honored you and gave you the dignity of a spiritual, rational soul that is made in his image, Magio Dei. Why? Because he wants and desires to have personal relationship with you. So no matter what your, your condition is at this moment or, or even at the moment of your conception, uh, God has amazing uh, love for you. And the whole key to it, is in turning any adversity into adventure is just to abandon yourself to God's will, which is to say God's will is, is saying God's will is the same thing as saying God's love because God wills only the good for you, wooing you, inviting you uh, to come closer to him and to enjoy a sweet, sweet uh, fellowship and relationship with him. And that's why this show exists, and that's why we have Father Don Calloway, the surfing priest, author of, uh, the book, The Champions of the Rosary, A Priest Who Loves Mary. 
uh, Father Don Calloway. Aloha. Aloha, brother. <laughs> so tell them, we're, we're, uh, about the time this airs, you and I are going to be, I get to join you in Israel. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I think it'll be my fourth or fifth trip to the Holy Land, and it's I'd love that place. I mean, it's just mind-blowing to walk where our Lord was, to walk where the Virgin Mary was, to be able to experience those things and to see that culture. Oh, it's just, I absolutely love it, man. What would you say is the most significant moment uh, you, you've had a while in the Holy Land? Is there one that really steps out, jumps out? Probably two, and because they're both so huge for me. One is being at the Sea of Galilee and being out on the boat out there, and you realize that this is the place, man. I mean, this is where <laughs> my Lord walked on water. This is where they were, where they were fishing. This is where he was teaching from the boat. This is the place. I mean, this isn't, you know, some a, a, a mock scene. This isn't a, a set. This is it, you know. I mean, that's mind-blowing. Um, and the second for me is in Jerusalem at the Garden of Olives, um, mm. the church that's built over the Garden of Olives where our Lord, you know, was in agony as he was about to enter into his passion and, and, and suffer for us. That place to me is just deep, man. I mean, I would love to be in that church at night with no lights on by myself and pray. I'd probably pass out from just sheer the intensity of it. You, you, would, try, you would try to stay up for more than an hour, better more than Peter and and uh, right, right. Yeah. But you, you know, up there on the on the Mount of Olives, would he been able to see or hear the soldiers coming for him? Yeah, I'm not sure what it back then. I mean, you know, it's 2,000 years ago, so it's changed a little bit as far as what's been developed. But maybe because back then, I mean, you know, it, it's kind of in a little like valley, so I would guess that the sound would would you know, be resonate through there. So yeah, quite possibly. Are we going to go to the Mount of Transfiguration? Oh yeah. Oh, for oh, sure. Man. Oh yeah. Well, this will be oh, you my wait first to see that dude. <laughs> yeah. Tell me. Oh, you're going to love it. <laughs> oh, that, that, that Mount, it overlooks the whole Valley of Armageddon where all these biblical battles have taken place. It, that spot is amazing. You're going to love it. It's just so, it's just so fascinating to me, you know, how the Lord, yeah. that, that little plot of land, it definitely is the whole holy land. So we're, I'm so excited. I know that my, I'll never be the same after going there. I uh, just got a, got right. a chance to go to Rome for the second time, and you know I stayed right uh, just a few hundred yards from where uh, Barnabas was buried. You know, I'm mm. like, wow, wow, yeah. So you know when you when you when you're places like that, it's it's a reality check to your masculinity. And these guys mm -hmm. these guys are devoted to the Lord. You know, these guys are the real mm -hmm. the real thing. So, um, Father, um, I, I want to I want to turn our attention to our to Our Lady. Um, I just remember as a young Catholic, I didn't get Mary. I didn't. Why do we spend time talking mm. to Mary? Why don't I just go directly to the Lord? Uh, but I didn't mm -hmm. ever. I didn't ever have a, a cynical view of it. It was more like, Lord, I don't understand this. And mm -hmm. and when my Protestant brothers and sisters would kind of say something bad about her, I would I would defend her like I would defend my mom or my sister. I didn't understand. Right. And then I drifted from the Catholic Church for a while. And then when I returned, finally, that first moment of a little inkling of a vein of gold, when I realized, mm. first, the first thing, when I realized she was the Ark of the Covenant. And mm -hmm. it just seemed like that was just like the splintering of... of it, it, there's so few verses about Mary, but there's mm -hmm. so much in those. It's like mm -hmm. she pondered... Uh, in her heart. And it's almost like you have mm -hmm. to do a great pondering of these verses, and then you get, then you mm -hmm. get an inkling and see her heart. What, is a, what, what would you yeah. tell people about, um, about making Mary uh, you know, more a part of their lives, and why? Yeah, I mean, what you said, I mean, is true. Like, even though there's not much in the New Testament, um, what is there is... is well, kind of all that there needs to be, because, you know, the fact that the inspired word of God calls her full of grace, well, what else need there be said? I mean, if you have the plenitude, the fullness of grace, that means you're lacking nothing. You just got to think it through to its logical conclusion. I mean, she's got everything. Um, and then, you know, also, um, you know, it says all generations will call her blessed. 
So if we're if we're actually biblical people, then we should be doing that. You know, that's in the New Testament. And so, and then think about it just from you know perspective of Jesus loves her. I mean, he made her. He he made his own mother. He made her perfect. And he's not going to be disappointed or offended if we honor her. You know, any more than I would if people came up to me and said, "Hey, Father, do you mind if we sing a song to your mom or if we give your mother a a a, 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 a bouquet of roses?" I'm not going to be like, oh, my goodness, I'm so offended by that. That is really disgusting to me. How dare you? Of course not. I'm going to be like, wow, that's great. Matter of fact, that's going to move me so much that if it, if I had the power to do it, I'd put people like that at the front of the bus. you know. But if you honor my mom, you're going to make me really happy. I love my mom a lot. Imagine how much Jesus loves his mother. Um, and he's he not still, going to be offended. And, he, and, and, you know, it's not like Jesus, when Jesus, you know, rose again resurrected still yeah. all god and all man only in a resurrected body his mom right. is still his mom you know and right. and uh, and uh it wasn't like it wasn't like she was just ne- a conduit for so that jesus could come to earth think about mm-hmm. think about the formation as she uh, nurtured him uh in his youth yeah uh, it was her that right. read the right. scriptures probably joseph too to him you know oh yeah, yeah. Well, that, and this is the amazing thing is, you know, there's part of the New Testament that we wouldn't actually have without her. I mean, Amen. think about it. Yeah. Where, yeah. You know, where did Matthew and Luke get the infancy narratives? They weren't there. They were clueless that the Messiah was being born and when it was going down. They were clueless that God was walking in, uh, in, in their midst. You know, they weren't there. So how did they learn that? How, do, how were they able to recount that story to us when they wrote their Gospels? Because Mary was still there after the Lord ascended to his father after the resurrection. She told him, just like she would have told him when he was lost in the temple for three days, you know, and when she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Isn't that interesting, Father, that that story is told? That is a mother, right? Oh, my gosh, you wouldn't, you would not believe, you know, you know, how mother, that was close to her heart. That was like a knife in her heart, you know, that, that moment when her child was missing. And I, and I I interrupted My mom tells people those stories about, like me. When I, when I was a kid, you know, my mom will tell people stories about when I was a little child. So, of course, Our Lady is, is going to do that about her Jesus. You know, she's going to share that with us. And that's why we have those, those stories. It's, it's powerful stuff. And, you know, also, Father, we're going to take a break here in a moment. But also, the deepest, well, I shouldn't say it that way, but the book of John is the first one that captured me, the Gospel of John. Yeah, I love, I love so it. So cosmic, yeah. so different than the three synoptic. Well, who was John mm. hanging around with? You know, it was Mary. He took her into his home, right. and she, mm. pondering these things in her heart, and him probably also being kind of that, given to that sort of meditation, contemplation. Mm-hmm. He went deep, you know, in his in his mm-hmm. uh, in his the, the sweetness of his love for Jesus is so apparent in his writing, and it just seems like it's mm-hmm. because it went that way, and it was it was a different sort of book. And the other three, because Mary was with him. That's the difference. You know, that, that's the feeling mm-hmm. I have. We're talking with Father Don Calloway, talking about our, bu- our mutual, beautiful uh, love uh, for our mother Mary, uh, the greatest human other than Jesus, who's all God and all man, of course, to ever live, uh, uh, Theotokos, mother of God. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to our website, bearwozniak.com, and, ch- and uh Join Bear's Man Cave. If you're a man, it's for men only. Join the Man Cave and participate with us on our private Facebook group. You can't join by going through Facebook. You have to go through our website. We go through a little screening process. We want to make sure we have the right people in, our, in, our, in that private group. But come to the private Facebook group, and then you can join with us with our every two or three weeks. We have a video meetup, uh, video chat. We, we talk story, and, uh, and also uh, you get all the great postings from all the other men. This is Bear Wozniak. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We call it that because... There's nothing more adventurous than abandoning yourself to God's will. It's really what life is all about. It opens the door to the greatest possible adventure. 
There's nothing timid about God. Just look at a black hole or a quasar. There's nothing timid about his will. Uh, he wants us to, uh, to experience stepping out and walking in faith and seeing walls tumble down and seeing lives and hearts changed. And that's why this, this ministry exists. Uh, we have as our guest, uh, we call him the surfing priest. He's certainly more than just a surfer dude. Uh, Father Don Calloway, aloha. Welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks, Bear. Uh, Father Don, I'm going to give you, a, get, kind of confess something to you. I, uh, I pray the rosary. Uh, sometimes mm. I, may skip, I may skip some days. But normally mm -hmm. I'm praying the rosary every day. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I use Tom Sullivan's Warrior Rosary, you know, which, which I know is a picture of in the mm -hmm. book, and we have it on our website. But uh, my relationship with Mary is when I need to go to war, and I need to every day, I pick up my rosary, and I feel like we're going to war together. And I know she's my mm -hmm. valiant. She is, she is, she, when I pray the rosary, things happen. I walked mm -hmm. as a Christian for, what, 40, I don't know, 30 years or more, 35 years before I began to pray the rosary. And only in the last five years have I taken it up as a weapon. And powerful things happen in other people's lives that I'm praying for. They're undeniably uh, Mary interceding to her son. And I see Mary as my warrior partner. But I haven't mm -hmm. taken the time to really bring her roses. I haven't mm. taken the time to really um, love her. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to ask you to share with us, how do we develop that the sweeter intimacy with her? Yeah, well, like any relationship, I mean, it just comes from spending time with her. So the rosary is awesome. I mean, I, I write books on it. I pray it myself every day. Um, I love it. I mean, I, I really do. I'm writing another book as we speak um, on the rosary. But, you know, even outside of that, it's good sometimes to set down the books, to set down the, the beads and talk heart to heart um, with um, her. Because as you said, you know, she is our queen. She is our princess. She, there is a reason we call her lady. In English, we've kind of lost it. But, you know, when, when you, it's, it's, it's chivalry for a man to say, my lady, you know, you can envision yourself getting down on one knee, bowing down before such beauty, such loveliness and letting her knight you, letting her, you know, help you and, and, and renew you. And I think that, you know, outside of the books and the beads and, and all that other stuff, which are great. And I promote those and I encourage people to do those every day, but also heart to heart, just talking to her, spending time with her in good times and in bad, you know, when, when things are great, when they're not great. That's how that relationship becomes one of when a day goes by when you don't do that, you'll know it and you'll regret it. And then you'll know, you know what? I am in love with you. I really do love you. I love spending time with you and I want to be with you. Um, I, want, I can't wait till tomorrow so I can talk to you again. You know, it's, it's just like when you love somebody, you know, when you're silly teenager, what do you say? No, you hang up. No, you hang up. You know, you're in this constant. <laughs> Nobody wants to let go, you know. Well, it's the same thing with prayer. Once you get used to it, you, you know, you can't wait till the next time. You're like, oh, I can't wait to talk to you again, you know. Well, it's the same thing in our relationship with her because she's just so wonderful, mm -hmm. and she helps us, you know, and takes us to Jesus. Why do you think there's uh, there seems to be more uh, Marian apparitions now in these last uh, decades and centuries? Do you think there's some hint of maybe Jesus coming back? Or, I mean, I just I have thoughts like that mm. sometimes. There seems to be more of the right. Lord, Lord presenting his mother to us right now. What is that? What do you think that's about? Yeah, I, I think you're right. Um, I mean, I'm certainly hoping that something happens in our days because the world's nuts right now and we need to wake up big time. And, I mean, not that I'm ready. I just, you know, for the benefit of everyone, I just wish, you know, some grand event like a Guadalupe event would happen mm. like in the 16th century where millions of people um, are converted instantly. And I also think though that, you know, the bookends of history from Genesis to, Re to Revelation talk about the dragon, Satan in a battle with the woman. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the mother of Jesus because she's the, the gateway to the Messiah, to our savior. And I think that right now the evil one is using beauty to really destroy the world. So we've got the age of pornography you know, which right now is, is a plague on the planet. It's almost in the heart of every man has been exposed to it. 
beginning around the age of 13, studies show, sometimes age 11, um, being exposed to this filth. And, and because men are naturally drawn to beauty and the feminine mystery. So I think that's why we have God giving us the antidote mm. in these apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary to heal our wounded hearts, especially the hearts of men, um, with a beautiful image that, that restores our manhood and doesn't destroy it. That's, that's what I think is going on. The devil is trying to use beauty to, to, to mess us up, and God is using beauty to, to get us back. And you said, uh, I hear you in my, my, the times that I've known you, you, that you do refer to Mary as, as Our Lady. And it is, a, it is a, mm-hmm. a knighthood. It is a chivalrous thing as our queen mother, you know, do you, uh, Mm -hmm. can you draw out some scriptures from the old Testament? The old Testament, it really wasn't the, like the queen, uh, the King's wife. That was the queen. It was really Mm -hmm. the queen mother that stood in the place of the queen, which is really another one of those wake up calls for those who want to put Mary on a shelf someplace. Um, because she's our queen mother. She's the mother of the King. Can you, can you talk to us about that a little bit? Yeah, no, that's, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, it was known as the queen mother was not the king's wife. It was his mother and her, it was called the Gavira. That's the technical word. And so when the people wanted to go to the king, they would ask for her intercession. And that was her role was to bring the people to the king. Not that she took the place of the king or not that she was more important than the king. No, of course not. But, you know, I mean, it's the mystery of a mother. It's the mystery of the maternal touch of maternal intercession. So when the mother goes to her son with some petition, the son's heart is moved. You know, if, I mean, you know, all people got to do to get me to do anything is to go tell my mom. And then if she comes to me and says, you know, Donnie, they're asking for this. Well, I'm, I'm going to do it. It's my mom <laughs> asking me. Well, it's the same thing in the kingdom of God. You know, we're not talking about robots and, 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 and some computers here. We're talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and through the Incarnation, the Son of Mary. He's got a mother, and he loves her, and, you know, he, he, he listens to her because her will is always in accord with his. She's never going to ask him Amen. to do anything contrary to, to his holy will. And so, and so there's such a beautiful just working of, out of the family of God there that we have God as our father, Jesus is our older brother and our savior and our Lord. And he shared with us the same gift of his mother. I mean, and that's, that's awesome. I mean, to be able to have the same mother that Jesus has spiritually, you know, she's our spiritual mother. That's just great stuff, man. Who would not want to be part of that? You know, I'm thinking I have a, when we did a long ride home, we had a beautiful brother on our ride with us, a Southern Baptist minister, Daniel Markham was raised Catholic. But, you know, so many Catholics, under-evangelized, under-catechized. Beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful brother. Oh, my goodness. He, he uh, ministers to the homeless in uh, Washington State. He lives in a cabin out, you know, by the lake. So, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, just, just kind of like that sort of, we call him cowboy, heavy rider. Mm-hmm. People saw him in one of the seasons he went down. We had a medical emergency but in one of the episodes. But uh, Daniel read the catechism before he came, and he saw so much humility in it. And he prayed the rosary with us, most of it. Mm. But he had some difficulty mm. with some of it. But t- you only have a minute or two, the, the rosary. I mean, what, what is there? The mm. only thing I could think of in all those statements in the, uh, ro- in the rosary aren't any of the words. It would just be the, commun- the problem with asking a saint to pray for us. Uh, mm. Can you address the right. communion of saints for just got a minute, Father? I'm, I'm leaving you short here. But... Well, sure. I mean, you think about it, you know, that the those who um you know are die with the gift of faith and and love for our lord well they're with him and so they can intercede for us and that's why we have you know these saints as jesus himself said you know people questioned him about the resurrection from the dead and and he he referred to to abraham and some people from the old testament he said well god is the god of the living not the dead um and so that being the case if the Virgin Mary, who's, you know, his mother is with him in heaven, which she has to be, you know, I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's his mom. I mean, if I were God, I'd certainly want my mom to be with me in heaven, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, well, then can't we ask her to help us, you know, to, to assist us, to, 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 to teach us, to n- nourish us with a, a greater love for Jesus. And she can definitely do that and wants to do that. Um, and again, it's not like she's God. The Catholic church has never taught that never will. Cause it's not true. Um, 
but she's our spiritual mother, and, and her role is to bring us to Jesus. That's and the she, whole point. And she was, born without, um, she was born without sin, but guess what? Right. She stayed without sin, too. She stayed faithful to right. God. We're talking with Father Don Kelway. Father, we got to go. Uh, our time is up for this week. But you and I, man, we're going to get to Tel Aviv. Are you going to go stand up paddle with me or maybe surf there if there's any waves there? Oh, I wish I had the time. <laughs> You'll have the time because you're flying in early. I probably won't. I'll be jealous. You, but I, I'm stoked for you. I hope you get some good stuff for okay. sure. Okay. We're talking with Father Don Calloway. We call him the surfing priest. He's written this beautiful book along with others. Uh, this one's called The Champions of the Rosary. Love you, Father Don. You guys uh, uh, will uh, uh, check us out at bearwoznik.com bear and uh, follow my Ocean Sunrise Catechism every morning. Follow me on Facebook, Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Viva Cristo Rey. Okay, Shane, you can start. You can stop streaming. Shane, you can stop streaming.